our lives are just been, are enriched every time we walk in here. This is a miraculous thing over here. This is the 77th Street, the Upper East Side Chabad. An 18 hour a day program, uh, seven days a week. But to us, a Jew is a Jew is a Jew. So all we ask people to do is to check their labels at the door. Anything is possible if you have faith and you work hard and you devote yourself to doing mitzvahs. I come here once a week in the mornings. Has no goyalim, has no redeemers. And I learn with uh, Rabbi. Uh, we study together. And we Sagi, no, there's something wrong in the cable. There's something wrong in the cable. On the one hand, it's a very, very highly structured type of program. On the other hand, it's very, very informal. Also implied here is it's my God. Because it's something that's able to, to appeal to, I think, anybody across the spectrum of their not only their religious experience, but also the depth of their learning. It's a two-way street. What you see right now is the breakfast, the daily breakfast that we always enjoy here. After the great um, davening in the morning, we just come here having a short breakfast and then we move on to the working day. Drop off. You just witnessed drop off and now that all the kids are here and they're playing and greeting one another and trying to settle in for the day. When I go on an airplane, I would like to go to Africa. It's just been a great community. The teachers are fantastic. The other families are fantastic. The administration, we've really been very happy. It's just a very warm, caring environment. and It's what really someone would look for in a preschool, some place to nurture your children. This is my son. This is my oldest son. I have two boys. I'm friends with the rabbi. My wife is friends with... Mrs. Krasniansky, and we really feel like family. The behind scenes here is, is crazy. It's, you know, busy. It's a 24-7 operation. We never stop. From the morning till the night, there's different things going on here. Preschool stops, Hebrew school starts. So weekends comes, Shabbos programs begin. Every day of the week, there's so many different things. I thought it was a very important institution to have on the Upper East Side. The Upper East Side had not had a mikveh for many decades and was really missing one. It's an essential institution of an Orthodox community. Rabbi and Chani have done so much to really build this place up and, and paid so much attention to detail. They're always so concerned that when a woman walks in, she, every woman, no matter what came before and no, what, no matter what's going to come after, every woman should have a positive experience, should have a, an experience where nothing felt negative. The en entire experience should be one without a hitch. Do you think that we can apply this week's Torah portion, Parsha Bo, to modern times? What Moshe was going through, trying to free the Jews, that's something that applies to us today too. We're also exiled. We study in class is usually the portion, the Torah portion of the week, but it always relates back to our life, family relationships, our children, um, our friendships. Well, on a personal note, I'd just like to say how much it's added to my life to be able to come to this class. Every week it gives me the fuel that I need to go on for the rest of the week. Uh, inevitably, I'll just be walking down the street and see something or something will happen to me and I'll make a reference to what I learned about in the class and it um, gets me through the day. <laughs> My daughter comes home on Monday night. I know she's just come home from Hebrew school because usually she has these great stories to tell, but it's the little things. It's the way that the other kids welcome her to that classroom. Uh, it's the way uh, that, that these kids just are, are genuinely excited to see Shana every, every Monday. And I don't think she gets that anywhere else, that, that warmth that can only come from uh, the Chabad house. 
moving very fast. When Bracha was born, they started this program called Friendship Circle. They were looking for volunteers, so me and my friend Sydney volunteer with Bracha once a week. You know, I can't say enough good things about it here. Sunday, working with Bracha, it's my favorite time of the week. And all my friends from school know that, and all my friends from camp know that. I was privileged to meet the Rebbe on several occasions, and every one of those meetings had a profound impact on me. When you think about what the Rebbe has accomplished with his army of shluchim all over the world, and with the shining example that we have here in our neighborhood with Robert Kazanyansky and with Hani and their amazing family, is the Rebbe didn't build followers, he built leaders. That we're now providing from the UJA Federation campaign a quarter of a million dollars a year to the Lubavitch school system, which is very important. This is new, new development. It's wonderful. And do you expect me to be satisfied about the quarter of a million? I'm not satisfied either. You are not satisfied. <laughs> if you were satisfied, I'd be worried. <laughs> yeah. You share me that you have no reason to be worried at all. <laughs> The key lesson that I've learned from coming to Chabad is the Rebbe teaches us that one Jew must love each and every other Jew unconditionally. And I, I found that there, there's no way better than that I could do this authentically each and every time I walk into a hospital room. I volunteered to do this after the rabbi inspired me and everyone else in the room, what are you going to do for the year? So this was my thing. So it's almost a year and a half, or almost two years, but I'm going to do this in May. So last week, Torah portion brought, uh, taught us the first seven of the plague. The first one is the plague of blood. I go to offices. We study together with Jewish business people. And we give them the opportunity to tap into 3,000 years of experience, which enhances and benefits their lives in many ways. And when I came to Chabad, I uh, had an experience for the first time of really a kind of a personal experience with my Judaism. Um, it's, it woke up something in me, uh, maybe it touched my soul, and it got me in, um, directly connected with a uh, feeling of being Jewish. I've gone to a few of their trips and I've been amazed each time even more so. The reason that it was so great was each day that we would get on the bus in the morning, the rabbi would share some Torah with us. We would play games, you know, with their, on the way home from each day's trip. We would do some Torah trivia. But what made it very special was that Rabbi Krasniansky has a way of conveying a little bit of Torah each day. And like he says, we all need a little bit of vitamin T. We were blessed with real partners who really are equals, who feel part of it. It was so clear that here, a densely populated neighborhood, a uh, very large Jewish population with a lot of Jewish infrastructure, but many, many Jews who simply were not being touched by Jewish life. Uh, and that just represented a terrific opportunity for Rabbi Krasniansky and for Hani to come here and put down their roots. We rented a Chabad center on 82nd Street a few years later. We rented different locations around the neighborhood. We hosted holiday services, Shabbat dinners. When uh, we didn't have a minion, we started off first uh, on Sundays. Then we went Mondays and Thursdays. Then we got a minion going every day. Then we had Shabbos morning. Then we went for Shabbos uh, afternoon. It was all one push by the rabbi who, uh, who felt that the community could handle it. It needed it. It was the right place at the right time. And with a lot of uh, effort, uh, uh, we were able to put the minions together. We looked around on the Upper East Side and we found a building and we got permission to, uh, after prolonged negotiations, we got permission to uh, knock it down. Um, and it was a five-story building and we got permission from the city to rebuild it with two extra floors. This new building emerged little by little, replacing the old building until there was nothing left and we had a building that was able to take full advantage of the size of the old building. The Chabad Center had all of these problems, but I don't think about the problems anymore. Sometimes when I do think about it, I marvel at how we got through them and wonder if I had to face them again, would we get through them? That taught me something about faith and perseverance. And uh, we ended up 
squeezing one and a half buildings into this building. <laughs> we put so much into this building. We have the mikveh, and we have the synagogue, and we have the preschool, and we have the, the kollel, and we have the Hebrew school, and we have, you know, the living quarters. And um, But it was worth, it was all worth the effort because it's only because we have this, this building that we're able to do so much, so much more. It took us to a whole different level. So we are able to attract families who would never ever set foot in a shul in Israel. They come to us, to our shul, they come to our events, to our programs, to a Chabad center. Shem asked us, do one mitzvah. You could do one small mitzvah. Everyone, every Jew can take upon themselves to improve, to grow. The Tanya we study here, the lessons we study here in the Chabad house is being broadcast to tens of thousands of people in over 70 countries uh, via the internet and television. Everybody enjoyed the lighting, they thought it was an amazing event. Uh, and although it was very cold outside, I think everybody felt very warm inside. I had the pleasure of going to Devorah's wedding and what a gift that was and you know just for them to bring us into the community and share and just show us this is it's like a whole other world that exists right here in our backyard that you know we never knew about i've always said it was only appropriate that a place that i would regard as a second home be a place that would help build the foundations for my primary home we went here actually right here it was a month after I decided to observe Shabbat. The primary reason why this place is special is because I met my, uh, my soulmate here. There's a different type of work here, the soulmate, sort of. There's actually an angel in charge of mixing things. I enjoy it a great deal. It increases Yiddishkeit and it's an inspiration to the uh, community. I've never been to Chabad before and it was a very, very great experience. Amazing, you know, it was just fabulous. It just, you know, in every way. Krasniewski's make a tick. It's their openness and their specialness and their welcoming. And Kindness. Their ability to learn, come as you are. The fact that we were able to be the ones to bring the Chabad message to the Upper East Side is humbling. It's just every day, it's so inspiring. My children are involved. Every one of us feels blessed. This was a miracle. You know, we started out with nothing, and thank God, uh, here we are today. Just very special people. There's, I've always said, there's a light that glows from 77th Street, and it's them. We're always looking for the next thing that we can grow, reach out to, get more people involved, get more people excited. And do more. Nothing would have been possible without our dear friends who have really have been with us from day one and, and have really helped us every step of the way. Yeah.